Hey, we are sorted. We've been eating and travelling together for well over eight years and we reckon we've worked out a formula or set of rules to increase our chances of the best food and travel experiences possible. We've spent the last 24 hours in Portland, Maine researching world-class lobster. Because today, Baz and I are going to use what we've learned to go head-to-head -head in an ultimate lobster roll battle. And we'll be using our rules along the way to give ourselves the best chance of having experiences and meeting people that we will remember forever. We call these game changers. Round two, ready? Yep. time of the day apart from waking up is breakfast uh, and so we've come to Becky's Diner which is one of your recommendations to come for the most authentic breakfast in Portland. I love the roll with curly fries. <laughs> <laughs> to make the most of the Portland seafood Baz got lobster benedict, Ben a haddock reuben, Jay steak omelette. <sighs> Breakfast done, fueled up on food. Now Barry and Jamie have two hours to go and source all the ingredients, lots of hungry style, for their ultimate lobster roll. Three, two, one. As it was getting late in the morning, I wanted to get fresh hot dog buns before places started selling out. So I set about finding some bakeries that have been recommended to us by our Portland viewers. No brioche, no hot dog buns, but I did get snacks. <laughs> Whilst I decided to get fresh lobster first, in case it turned out to be difficult to get hold of, it wasn't. Turns out looking for lobster in Maine isn't that hard. Driving on the road, sign says turn left for live lobster. So we're going to do just that. I feel like I'm in a movie. This is ridiculous. I think it's just a farm, Barry. So this is Caitlin. She runs the farm with her family. She took us out back where we saw the lobsters in the big pot and she had some monsters, but she pointed out actually the smaller soft shell lobsters are better for lobster roll. Yeah, they taste sweeter and they retain more salt water. She also said steam them. You don't lose any of that flavour into the lobster cooking pot. And she even threw in some seaweed to enhance that steam. Baz had actually picked up some fresh ingredients the day before at the farmer's market, so next to grab was his bread. But would that prove as much of a struggle as Jamie was finding? <laughs> Turns out, no. Top of dollars. Easy as that. That place looks and smells amazing. They have incredible bread, but no rolls. <laughs> they bake all of their bread there, but no rolls. Jamie decided to shelve the rolls for the time being and focused instead on fresh scallops and fresh lobster. Do you think I could win a battle with a make your own main lobster roll kit? You'd beat Barry with it. I would beat Barry. The size of that! Oyster crackers. This is what I need to put in my stuffing. Lobster, lobster, lobster. Do we have to put the seatbelt on in the car? Rollgate has put us severely behind. So we're having to rush a little bit. So why don't we put the camera down and drive? For a Big Sky Baking Company, I phoned them, they have exactly what I want, as long as they haven't run out. <laughs> Bread down. This is it, the conclusion to our Portland, Maine lobster adventure. Two normals, one ultimate lobster roll each. Boys, get to it. Right, so I'm making, I am making a brown butter and cider lobster in a brioche roll. And while that idiot is making lobster wrong, I'm going to start off with a wasabi charred slaw on top. Maybe too many twists in one place, but give it a go. I'd like to think that after 10 years of cooking, that sort of my Julian skills are on point. I don't know how I'm still screwing this up. I'm really nervous about this bit because at Bayern to Maine they had a delicious 
wasabi mayonnaise mixed in with their lobster. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a wasabi based vinaigrette. I've never used wasabi powder, so I have no idea if wasabi and lemon really work. How hot is that going to be? And then I'm making my dressing which is lemon juice, wasabi powder, olive oil and some cider. Well it couldn't go worse. On its own, quite vile, but I think once combined together, delicious. There's a spoon there. I am going to be making a stuffed and baked lobster roll served with lobster butter. Mm. Step one done. Step two. My lobster's been in the freezer for about 20 minutes. I'm going to put it into a pan of boiling water that's been salted for about 10 minutes to cook through. Get it out, let it cool down, and then I can pick it. Next, my stuffing. Now, this is where I'm getting a bit clever. This is from Boone's. We had a baked and stuffed lobster, and it was incredible. And I thought if I could take that and put it into a lobster roll, it would be sensational. It's basically a lot of butter with fried onions, garlic, thyme, some crackers, breadcrumbs, and herbs, scallops, and of course my lobster meat. Now Baxter off of High Roller told me that we only want to use the knuckle and the claw meat from the lobster because the tail is just too big and also the knuckle and claw are that much more tender. Oh, oh my beer, I put it down somewhere, I can't finish it. <laughs> Most places that we went for a traditional main lobster roll had clarified or drawn butter with it. I'm going to use this for my butter. Time for my lobster. We're in Maine, when in Maine, we're eating lobster. I've got to do what has got to be done. Oh my goodness. Oh God! Whoa. So for my lobsters, I am steaming them. This is because if you boil them, you lose some of the lobster flavor into the water and it helps stop them overcooking. I've got an inch of water in a pan, bring it up to a boil, put a colander at the top of that, and then I'm chucking on some seaweed. This seaweed will help infuse the lobsters with its natural seaweedy flavour. Then just take your two lobsters, put them into the pan, put the lid straight on, and give it 15 minutes so they cook perfectly. And it's as simple and easy as that. With my lobster now chilled, it's time to crack it open and pull out that lobster meat. I'm using all of the lobster meat apart from the darker head meat. This is a local cider that I picked up from the farmer's market, but it's not a normal cider, it's a funny colour. It's actually got aronia berry in it, which is another local berry, which tastes a bit like cranberry, but it's slightly more tart. Ooh. My plan is to reduce this down to about a shot glass worth and, and add that to my browned butter, which I'll then be tossing over my pulled lobster. To finish off my stuffing, I'm going to put everything into a bowl. That's my lobster meat, my scallops, my breadcrumbs, my oyster crackers, my onion, garlic and thyme mix, some parsley, salt, pepper and some lemon juice. Really important to catch any pips. And I'm bringing it all together with my lobster butter, which I have to say is the best smelling thing since... No, it's just the best smelling thing. That's it. Now traditionally that would get stuffed back into the lobster shell, baked and then served, ta-da. But because we're going to put this into a lobster roll, I'm going to bake it off in a pan for about 10 minutes with a few more breadcrumbs on top and it's going to cook the scallops and crisp up. It's going to be amazing! Now at Eventide we had the most unbelievably indulgent brown buttered lobster and I'm going to try my best to recreate that. I'm just now waiting for that to turn a nice nutty brown colour and then I'll add my beautiful cider reduction that I made earlier. It looks a little bit like cough syrup. So far, I am perfectly poised to win this one. That is well balanced. Right, for my bun, I've gone for a brioche loaf. Buttering it on all four sides. Yeah, that's right. And I'm gonna grill it. How are your uh, basic hot dog buns, mate? Yeah, sure, mate, but have you ever had them smothered in lobster butter? You can try rolling it in glitter, mate, see what happens. That's is it a burnt brioche bun you're using? I hear charcoal was a food trend in 2016. Maybe that's why it's playing off. Boys, start making them look pretty. Plate them up. You know what? It's coming together. It's not a classic, but 
think I'll break it. Last minute. Last ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Step away from the lobster. A lovely day. Well, apart from all the rushing around, I have also had a lovely day. It's about to get better. I know. Four lobster rolls. <laughs> Bad. Before I tuck in, any final thoughts? I really wasn't sure that was going to come together, but I could not be proud of that. Literally bursting with lobster meat inside. Oh. The first thing you get is that buttery, crunchy, sweet brioche, and then you get a little bit of acidity from your crunchy chard and the bitterness of chard, but the overriding flavour is that kind of sweet, nutty brown butter with the cider and the texture of the lobster steamed really well. Look at the claw there, it's like bouncy, it's just cooked. Jamie, before I take a big mouthful of this, mm. any last words? For me, this was about combining my favourite lobster roll experience with my favourite lobster experience of our research. Do I pass the scratch and sniff test? <laughs> Again, you got a, you got a good squeeze, but you have still got those crispy bits, those charred bits, and I can smell the lobster butter. It's amazing how what is essentially lobster from the same area, wrapped in bread, can taste so different. The first thing you get is that garlic and the onion and the thyme and the parsley and the lemon, all the freshness. And then you're just left with that lobster butter. It is intense because you've used the shells. The lobster meat itself, you've gone pure claw and knuckle, which means every bit looks amazing. Looks cliche lobster and it tastes great. Both paired with delicious drinks, but today my winner by a lobster shell It's Jamie. <gasps> Ooh, the garlickiness in that is amazing. I don't know how traditional it is to Maine, but what it Come is, is way. delicious. What is happening to the world? How is Jamie winning battle after battle after battle? Try yours, try each other's, and you'll see how close it I is. I was really enjoying this holiday. Dig it in. No, so I go back for that. <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 wait <laughs> Are you the winner? Well, yeah, but how do I eat yours? Do I just go, go in from the You've top? You've never struggled. We had such an amazing time in Portland and we definitely do not take for granted the fact that we get to travel and eat for a job with our best mates. So we wanted to bring attention to some of the local heroes in Portland who are doing wonderful things for people in their local communities. People who are quite literally passing it on. So yeah, Wayside, we're a hunger relief agency based here in Portland, Maine. Um, and we operate a food rescue program where we have two trucks out on the road and they go to different grocery stores, they go to farms and pick up food that is perfectly good to eat but would otherwise be thrown away. And we bring that back here to our warehouse where we sort it. That's how we end up planning our menus for our community meals. What's in the boxes? Don't know yet. Just anything. It's like a mystery box. It is. The responsibility to cook this much food is terrifying. That's Jamie's portion. Today it's pasta and sauce, and Carly's making some beautiful salads. It's perfect! <laughs> we have other folks that um, can't quite afford enough food to get by, so they rely on, on these meals to help them get through the month. The majority of our work is done by volunteers, countless volunteers, hundreds of volunteers. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to have a job where I'm making a difference, I feel. The great thing about the Lost and Hungry Rules is you spontaneously experience a destination. However, you need a great looking and great feeling city with exciting food options for it all to work. And Portland really does have it all and more.